for all the years I've heard people talk about the simple fact, I'm going to make a New Year's resolution and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Understand this, we can do nothing of ourselves but unless we have the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Amen? Amen. Now, one of the things that I want you to understand, resolutions can go back, be gone back on. But I believe with all my heart, if we get to a place to say that, listen, I don't want to do or make a resolution, but I want complete deliverance from whatever this is that I have in my life. And Lord, I come to you for that. Then I don't have no problem. Because you know what? If I come to the Lord and I say, God, and I'm completely honest with God, God is going to hear me through Jesus Christ, his son. The Bible tells us that. And he is going to do that cleaning up. Well, how am I delivered then? How can I get deliverance from, well, let's say uh, drinking and smoking or, or eating or, or lust or, or, or what about uh, that pride of life or, or the lust of the eye, you know, things like that. How can I get deliverance from that in, in my life? First of all, there has to be honesty. Honesty in your life is, as a, a child of God, number one, to be honest, first of all, with yourself and honest with God, if you expect to receive God's blessing of deliverance, and it is a blessing. If you will, please take your Bibles and turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 32 and verse 5 here. See, the lack of honesty keeps areas of your life and my life not being honest in, in dark places that we don't need to be. And demon spirits strive in such darkness. Amen. Now, they will be there and they'll come against you. But honesty helps us bring them into the light. And I'm going to tell you, any sin not confessed or repented of gives demonic forces legal right to remain where they are. We need to understand that. So ask God to help you see yourself and, and as he sees you and bring the light, uh, anything in your life that, that's not of him. Look at this. The psalmist wrote here, he says, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquities I have hidden. I, 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 I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Salah. Do you realize that no matter where you are in life and no matter what you've done, if you're honest, number one, if you're honest with God and you're ready to get things lie, right in your life, the Bible says here, the psalmist says, I confess my sins. You heard me and you forgave me. You heard me and you forgave me. Let God bless the reading of his word to our hearts and our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Psalms 139. Look at it. 139. Verse 23 and 24. Now, when you talk about getting things right and being honest in your life and in your walk, do you realize there are a lot of Christians today that are born again, but they're not really honest with themselves and not really honest with God? The psalmist wrote, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. In other words, the psalmist says here that if you'll lead me in the way everlasting, I'm going to follow you. So I want to ask you here this, this Sunday, the first Sunday of January. Do you really want to start a new year, a new life, a new walk with God the way that it should be? With the empowering of the Holy Spirit in your life? This morning, you believe, I feel such an anointing in this place right now in this morning. Because I believe surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. God is his personality is right here, right now, wanting you to know that you can have that fullness. How can I be full, be filled? Listen, from the innermost being, the Bible says, will flow rivers of living water. It's not going to stop. It's going to flow. It's going to come out. It's going to get on somebody else. I need to be honest with myself. I need to be honest with God that I need that fulfillment. I don't need to try to make a promise to myself but I need that promise as an acknowledgement from God that I can do it through him. But it's my choice of whether or not I want to follow his leadership or not. But see, not only does it deal with honesty with yourself and deal with uh, honesty with God, 
We have to be humble, have humility in our lives. Well, what in the world has that got to do with when you're making a, a, a New Year's resolution or wanting to be delivered? This one thing. <clears throat> if you will, please look at James chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. You have to realize and recognize that you're, de you're dependent on God and his provision for deliverance is everything. Is everything. Yeah, but you just, look what he says. Got it? But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Do you realize that a lot of us, our pride stands in the way of the grace of God? And we're not really humble before him? Some of our attitudes is, I'm a child of God and you're to bless me because I'm your child and I accepted your son. But listen, there are stipulations that. The Bible says if we abide in him and his word abiding us, there are stipulations. How often will we look at the word of God and take it lightly? Here, the empowering of the Holy Spirit wants to give us wisdom and knowledge. How does that happen? When the power of God comes on you, just even as it did. See, Jesus was bathed and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Even though that he was God and he was man, he still had the baptism of the Holy Ghost of God. Because the Bible said that when he come up out of the water, the Spirit as a dove come and rested upon him. And, the, and, the, and the, it was heard out of heaven, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. Then why did he have to be uh, baptized under the Holy Ghost? It was to empower him in that flesh part or man part of his life because he had feelings and hunger and thirst just like you and I do to empower him to get through those things. In order to make these resolutions, as you might say, or to be delivered from whatever it is, you need the power of God. You cannot do it by yourself. You need the full and errant word of God, the power of God working in and through your life that whatever you say will come to pass through the word of God. Amen. And I believe that with all my heart. Humility is so important. In James chapter 5 and verse 16. Look what he says here. Confess your trespasses or confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Prayer is very important. Let me say this. It deals with forgiveness. If you want the fullness of God, if you, and I share it with the, the, the uh, Bible study class this morning. Now listen, don't miss this. If you've got anything against anybody and through the years, it may have been 25 or 30 years ago, it don't matter. And you've kind of shirked it off. How many of you really want to be blessed by God? And you've really, you've really tried, man. You've really done things to, and to, to be blessed. Anybody? Come on. I know I have. But it didn't happen. And I don't understand why it didn't happen. It's because probably something of the past that was done or said that was never repented of. Remember, David said a while ago, I acknowledge my sins. Now you show me, show me, and God will. He'll show us. If you have fault against anyone, the Bible says, you know, you bring before you place your alms that you go to the altar. You put your alms there and you leave and you go make it right with that person. Yeah, but you don't understand what they did. It don't matter what they did or what they didn't do or what you did or what you didn't do. Nita and I brought up a real, uh, uh, Nita brought up a real good uh, question this morning, but what about if you go to them and, and some of the others say, well, if you go to them and they won't accept it, then the Bible said you've done your part that you shake the dust off of your feet as a testimony to that house and walk away from it. Because, see, in order for your blessings to come from God, it means that you've got to get your heart right. That person has to deal with their own. So, again, let me ask you this. How many of you really want to be blessed by God? It's up to you. It's left up to you. It's left up to you. See, repentance is so important. And you think about this. In Amos, the book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 3. 
Understand, repentance is a determined turning away from sin and, and, and Satan. In, in other words, when we repent of our sin and we call out to the Lord, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry that I did this and I repent of my sins. It means that I turn away from it, that I won't go back to it no more. Now get this. He says, can two walk together unless they walk in agreement? Now what in the world has that got to do with repentance? Well, look, look at marriages today. It's one of the saddest things to see marriages falling by the wayside today. I'm talking about falling by the wayside, and the only thing it is is, is Satan has taken over the homes, or demonic forces has taken over the homes. Christ is not the way it used to be in the home. But how, how can I get over this? Ezekiel wrote in chapter 20 and verse 43, listen to this. And there shall ye remember your ways. In other words, we need to remember things that we've done that we won't do them again. You can't go back and fix 2009. But now it's 2010 that you can start it right with the Lord. Get things right in your heart and your life. Get things right with other people before you start your walk in 2010. Look, look at this. And there, were, there you shall remember your ways and all your doings and with which you were defiled. And you shall love yourselves and your own sight. Because, listen to this, of all the evils that you have committed. And a lot of times we don't think about it as evil. And it is evil. If it's against God, it's evil. But I got to have, and not only do it repentance, we need to renounce these things. 